Hi guys, welcome to my little paintbrush. My name is Miss Cammy. Today we get to paint Maribel. I love this movie. I love this character. So it's going to be a good time. Um, we've really simplified her for you. So I hope you're ready to um, learn some new techniques and just create this painting with me. Um, I'm really hopeful that you have our paint kit because if you do, your surface is prepped just like mine is. You also have the exact same paints I'm going to use and you have the same size brushes I'm going to use today, even though they're a little bit different. Um, they're the exact same sizes. So we've got a flat um, number 12. This is a great stable to have. I've got a detail brush. This is the number two. And then I have this number um, six round, which is awesome to have on hand for those areas you're not quite confident using your big brush, but you don't want to use your little one quite yet. Um, let's check out our paint palette. I had a little incident with the black paint, but you're going to get the idea here. I've separated my white into three piles. Um, two, three, four, whatever you want to do, just separate your whites. The main reason for this is we're going to use a lot of white throughout the painting. And every day we dip, or every time we dip our brush into the white, um, we contaminate it a little bit with, with our other colors. And so if we keep them separated, we'll always have fresh, clean white to use. Lastly, make sure you have a cup or jar or two of water. I like to have two. Same reason for having multiple piles of white. You just always have clean water that you can use to dilute your paint for highlights and other things like that. Okay, now before we get started, I want to remind you that I'm going to keep a pretty steady pace. My paint is going to dry super fast because I'm surrounded by lights uh, for this recording. So that's going to make my paint dry way quickly and help me to keep a good pace. Now, if I'm going too fast for you at any point, please pause, uh, rewind, fast forward, take two, three days to paint this, get a snack and come back, whatever you want to do. Um, to be successful at your piece, please do it. Don't feel like you have to keep my pace or paint this within the time frame that I do. Okay, let's get started with our flat brush, our number 12. Swish it around in some water. And we are gonna start with Maribel's skin tone. So this really is a fun opportunity for you to create your own um, tone of skin for her. You can go lighter, you can go darker, you just have the ability to make this your very own. What we're going to start with is getting a scoop of brown and some white and just mixing those two together to start. I always start with a little bit because you can add um, darker colors, but you can't take those dark colors away once they're in your paint. So here's a start, okay? Now at this point you can decide a little more brown or a little more white, okay? And a tip for you is that your paint will dry a shade or two darker on your surface than what it looks like on your plate or your palette. So veer on the lighter side if you like a shade, maybe add a touch of white so it dries the color that you want, okay? I'm gonna start with this. Sometimes we have to get it on our canvas before we're happy with it. Um, so I'm gonna start with this and see where we're at. Now, we've got our eyeballs, glasses, lips. There's a lot of lines happening on her face, okay? Um, the most important thing in this moment is we want to stay out of the eyeballs and this center smile piece because that is her teeth, so we want to try and keep those white. Everything else you can paint over or roughly go around, and it's not going to make a big difference in the next few steps, okay? Um, so look, I'm going to go right over the glasses. That will also help to um, create kind of a layer of paint over that line so it's not as, um, doesn't stand out as much when we go do those lime green glasses. Oh, excuse me, something tickled my nose. Okay. So this is when you can decide, oh, I want to go lighter on the skin tone or darker. I'm going to add just a touch of white. It's really close, but I just want it a little bit lighter. Okay, so I went right through the eyebrows, and I'm going right through the glasses. 
but I'm careful around the eyeball because I don't want to get paint in the eyes if I can help it because that part of the eye is white and our canvas is white so if we're careful we can just kind of avoid that step altogether which is kind of nice anything to make the process a little bit easier for us when we create take some of the stress off you can see what I'm doing here um, careful around the eyes but going through kind of everything else so just a little reminder that when we paint characters we are super super hard on ourselves because we have this idea right of what this character is supposed to look like we've seen the movie all the things and we just kind of approach it with i've got to get this right you know and sometimes that can actually cause a lot of stress and we don't enjoy the process as much. So even though we know this is Maribel and that's what we're here to paint, just remember that this painting is going to look hand painted, okay? At the end of the day, at the end of this painting, it's not gonna look like a print. It's going to look like you painted it and it should. So kind of take that pressure off you it's also, I promise you, in the end, going to look like Maribel because there's certain things in her clothes and her features that we're going to keep very true to Maribel. So the viewer, when you're done and they're looking at your art, they're going to see Maribel, okay? So just kind of deep breath, take the pressure off, and just try and have a good time. Okay. So... Even though you're welcome to paint over the lips, I'm not going to. I'm going to paint around them just kind of to help me with my overall lines. But if you get a little bit of the skin tone in there, it's not a big deal. So pretty much everything on Maribel is going to be outlined, even her lips. And I say that now because it's really gonna help with clean lines towards the end of our painting. So if you're thinking, oh, there's just so much happening and I can't appreciate this or that, um, we're gonna clean it up, okay? So let's paint her ears. We're gonna try not to get paint in her earrings, but it's okay if we do. They're gonna be this bright blue It'll cover up the skin tone if we get it in her earrings. No big deal. Also, don't worry about getting any of this color in her hair because her hair is a nice dark brown. And again, it'll cover up this color. Got the ears. Okay, now let's do the neck and the chest area. Come around now her dress is white so that's another thing we're gonna try to avoid painting if we can help it so try not to get anything in there but if you do uh, we'll have time to clean it up you can pause the video and you can you know paint it white you have plenty of white to do that so there's not a line right here for this side of the neck so I want you to just go straight down okay and that just comes down to how we make our patterns and what lines we decide to give you and all that stuff. Sometimes we can't do all the lines we want to, but just go straight down and just like that. Now, if you are looking at your painting and you're thinking, I want another layer over my skin tone, you can go ahead and do that once it's dry. For me, my paint is hardy dry. I told you guys. I'm surrounded by lights here so I can quickly go through and just kind of add a quick layer over where I feel like it needs to add, have a little more but maybe yours doesn't or maybe your paint is still pretty wet and you just want to do that after you let it dry a little bit okay so there we go let's wash our brush Ooh. 
that first step is always kind of tricky. We're super nervous. So we get that out of the way and let's just keep going. Let all that awesome skin tone dry and we're going to go ahead and do the background. Our background is going to be pink. So you've got red on your plate. We need the red for the lipstick. We need different shades of pink for the butterfly. So let's make a light pink. My plate is getting messy fast today, but I'm just going to make a light pink for my background with white and a touch of red. Now you have the primary colors. Um, if you have our pink kit, you have red, yellow, and blue. So you can make a green background, a purple background, anything you want. That's so cool about this kit is you have all the colors. So whatever you want to do, I'm going to go with a light pink. So once I have that color, go ahead and paint my background. And I don't have a ton of background because she's got this awesome head of hair, right? I love Maribel's hair. It's just thick and dark and beautiful. So I don't have a ton of space as a background. And it's okay if I get the background color in her hair a little bit. Pick your battles, guys. Don't stress those things. I'm painting on multimedia paper, so I don't have the edges of a canvas to worry about. If you're painting on a canvas, make sure you wrap your edges. Go around the sides so you have a nice completed piece when you're finished. Now we have a couple of spots because she's got that nice short hair. Got a couple of spots we're going to go through here. If at any point in time you're like, I cannot keep using this big brush, I need a smaller brush, you have that number six round that you can use. But if you want to keep using your flat and you need to decide if you're going into the hair or the dress, go into the hair because it's going to be dark, the dress we want to keep white. Okay, now we have this little corner too. Just like that. See, not a ton of background, but we do want to add some light around Maribel. So I'm going to put the background color on my brush, chunk of white. With that white edge, I'm going to butt up right next to Maribel. And sometimes I call this putting a halo around our subject because it's just like a fun way to brighten them up and it kind of um, draws attention to them because they are the subject, right? They're the star of the show. And it also breaks up your background so it's not super flat. It kind of adds some fun dimension here. And I, I just love the way it looks. We do this with almost all of our pieces. If you're familiar with our work, this is not an uncommon step. It is one that I've had artists many times choose not to do. And I take no offense to that. If you're like, not my, not my style, you don't have to. That's what's, that's what's great about creating, right? Get to do our own thing. All right. See, I'm just adding touches here and there. It's not perfect, guys. It doesn't have to be showing those brush strokes, showing showing off that this is hand painted is not a bad thing at all. All right. Washing my brush out. She's going to come together a lot faster than you think. Um, especially with her dress being white. It's going to be pretty quick. Okay, so I'm washing my brush and now we're going to do the hair color, which is a nice dark chocolate brown. So in order to get that beautiful shade, I am going to take a little bit of black and mix it with brown. Now I don't want to go crazy with the black, especially at first. That first step, I don't want to just overpower my brown. So I'm going to do it little bits at a time until I get that nice, deep, rich brown that I want. 
but black is super powerful. So if you just like get a big scoop of black and put it in your brown, you're probably going to regret it because it's going to go dark real fast. Now for the sake of good coverage, because brown is dark and the darker our colors, they tend to need a lot more layers. I'm going to come over here and steal a little bit of white. Okay. So it, it's hard, like it doesn't make sense, right? We just darkened our brown and now we're adding white, right? So it's kind of like, what's going on here? Um, but that is gonna help with coverage. The white is super pigmented and so it's gonna give us good coverage. All right, so got that all made. I'm gonna kind of wipe off my brush a little bit. It's getting really thick and goopy. And let's fill in this beautiful hair, okay? And you're gonna notice right away probably with your brown that yeah, it's a shyer color, you're gonna see a lot more streaks and you're gonna think, oh, I'm gonna need another layer. We both will, okay? So just get that first one in. The white has helped, but it still might need two layers. And again, I'll be able to do that kind of back to back but you might have to do it on another step, okay? While your first layer dries. The problem with if we don't let our paint dry before we do another layer is our paint enters like a sticky phase when it's drying. And once it enters that phase of the drying process, we start to pull paint up instead of laying it down if we brush over it over and over again. So we would just want to make sure it's dry and not in that sticky phase when we go to add our second layer. All right. Got these fun little curls that happen, you know, those loose hairs that happen. Um, you can try and get it with your, your big flat brush. If you're like, oh, it's not working for me, do the best you can, and then we can go back and clean it up. Okay, I'm going to get close to her head now, so I'm going to slow down. So I don't want, don't want it too crazy. We won't be outlining around her head because this is already pretty dark, and so... This is my opportunity for a good crisp line is right now. So I'm going to try and slow down and get that. But just do the best you can. That's all we can do, right? Remember as you're painting to think about the edges of your canvas. And every time you get to the edge of a canvas, think, okay, I've got to make sure I wrap this. If it touches the edge of my canvas, I've got to wrap my canvas. All right, the other thing that's going to be happening with your paint as you paint along is it's going to start to kind of seize up on you a little bit and it's going to start drying on your plate because it is acrylic paint and it's fast drying. So remember to keep water in it. Keep your paint nice and diluted. It should kind of stay the consistency of melted ice cream. So it still has a little bounce in it, but it's not water. And that's really what you want to go for. Okay, let's see. I'm trying to decide how to go around all of these things because I can't move. I can't move my canvas. I'm kind of stuck here because of all the equipment around me. If I was painting at home, I would flip my canvas, turn it upside down, all this other stuff to make it more comfortable for me to reach certain areas. So do that if you are able to, 100%. But since I'm not, I'm just kind of trying to decide what angle to get all these crazy little spots. Okay, lots of hair. So I'm actually gonna stop right here in this section and use my number six to get that portion because I just, I don't, I don't trust myself with this brush, so I'm going to do that. Curve around. 
Got the fun earrings. I mean, she is just so colorful. And honestly, you can do a lot more color on this piece than I did, especially with you having the primary colors. Um, I tried to keep this simple so our little artist could enjoy it too. But if you're wanting to add to this, you can do so much. You can add so much color to her, which was one of the fun aspects of this movie, right? Was all the fun colors. Same thing down here. I'm just going to hold off and use a smaller brush to get those areas. But before I do that, I'm going to add my second layer because I can. It's nice and dry up here. Um, and I'm just going to put in that layer. Again, you can wait until your painting's nice and dry to do this second layer. But you can tell as soon as we put that, uh, that other layer in, darkens it right up, right? Right where we want to be. Some of our colors are just a little more shy than others. And brown is definitely one of them. Okay, I'm going to try and get a nice curve right there on her fun, bouncy hair. And come up here. Right into her part. Love it. Love it, love it. We're going to do some light in her hair too, so if you're like... Oh, some of these parts are darker than others, even with my second layer. When we go and do the light, it'll kind of break that up a little bit, so. Okay, now I'm gonna put this brush in my water. Well, hold on, I'm gonna come and do a second layer here. See, this is all already dry for me, guys. It's crazy. Craziness. Okay, but I'm gonna pop this bigger brush in some water. Grab my number six. That's your like medium sized brush if you have our kit. It's like the, the medium sized one. So it's, it's round, it's not a flat head. And I'm gonna use this brush to do both the eyebrows and all the areas that I just wasn't comfortable doing with my big flat. So I'm gonna start up here with this fun little stray hair. She just has that fun, blowing in the wind, hair going on. Okay. And I'll come down here. Do the same thing here. Doing the best I can to have a clean edge, but reminding myself constantly, and I have to do this because I'm a super clean painter, um, so I have to remind myself too that it's okay if it's not perfect, you know? I think sometimes we, especially with all of our animation and everything being so perfect and our ability to have like these digital images, it's hard to remind ourselves constantly that this is, this is done by hand. And we have to appreciate that for what it is. Just getting in these little areas. Now this brush at times might feel a little big too. Even though it's smaller than our flat, you may be feeling a little intimidated even by this size. Just do the best you can. And remember, you can use your detail. Okay, that is completely up to you. Um, I prefer not to until I'm doing my detail lines because Anytime you use your detail to fill space, you risk giving that detail brush a bad hair day. And when you give it a bad hair day, it no longer gives you the crisp, nice lines that we love our detail brush to give us. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so lots of little areas to go around here. Maribel and all her little 
butterflies and fun things. Okay, I'm going to go back to where I don't have two layers in yet, and I'm going to give myself another one. Okay. Just matching the darkness of all the rest of her hair. That's our goal here. So much concentration. But we are coming along. Once we get these areas filled, um, that's really the like the time consuming work because once the areas are all filled in then we get to do the fun details and that's when our character really comes to life okay just finish this little flip up there now let's go in those eyebrows and get those filled in she's got nice thick eyebrows and we can still see them through the skin tone that we painted over and they go right into her hair which is kind of nice right you don't have to stress too much about ending it in this perfect way it just goes right to her hair this one kind of stops at the rim of her glasses so we're going to be careful to kind of go around that rim on this eyebrow. These glasses are probably the trickiest part of the painting. And so we don't want to do anything to make that step more difficult than it's, it's going to be for us because they're going to be these circles. Those are tricky. So we got our eyebrows in. They're definitely going to need another layer. But we've got this beautiful dark hair and it's looking so great. While my eyebrows dry a minute, I'm just going to get my detail brush with some skin tone and I'm going to come down her little chin. I kind of went into it a little more than I wanted to with her hair, so I'm going to try and clean it up if I can. And you know, that's what's so great about painting in general or any kind of art. You have the ability to just paint over and fix things like nothing is final, you know? Okay, go over my eyebrows again. See this second layer? Just bam. Just like that. Fills it right in. Nicely dark eyebrows. These are, again, features for her that are going to make her look like Maribel. So even if you're messing up in different places or you think you are and you're like, oh, this isn't Maribel, these little things are really going to make her Maribel. So don't, don't think you have failed her quite yet, okay? We are going to, she's going to come together. So you see this spot right here where it's not looking like I can lay down that paint. It's because that little spot was still wet and I'm trying to do another layer. So that's what I'm talking about. Now I'm pulling paint up instead of laying it down. So I'm just going to let that dry for a minute. And I'm going to wash my big brush. And I think I'll go ahead and do the highlights in her hair right now. The reason I'm going to do that right now is I've got my brown paint all ready for me. And I want to use it before it dries up. So let's go ahead and do those. We are going to load our brush. This my flat brush. I popped back to my flat brush. Load it with the dark brown and then go find some white and put a little corner of white on your brush. And that's what we're going to use to do our highlights, okay? And the tricky thing about highlighting dark hair is you're trying not to make it look like they have gray hair. <laughs> You're just trying to add some fun light to their hair. So anytime you're like, okay, now she's got graying hair, um, remember you can put 
more brown on your brush and darken it even more so that it's not this like bright white, okay? So just work with it a little bit. Don't feel like you've ruined it if you did if you get a nice chunk of white on there. Don't feel like, "Oh my gosh, I totally I ruined Maribel's hair. I gave her gray hair." Like right here, you might think, "Oh, that's too dark." Add some more brown and go over it again. And as soon as you do that, it changes the whole thing. All right. Keep doing this here. Go over on this side. This is also going to give her like, instead of just this flat, you know, hair, these highlights are going to add that idea that she has, she has curly hair, right? That's what we love. We love all of her fun curls. So this is going to give that idea as well. We're actually going to add right here. We're going to add some fun. See, we just kind of added. So you know what? Her hair is curly. So we started here in the part and we're just going to like loop it around and see now we gave her some curly hair. Add some light going around her ear a little bit. It's so fun, right? This is such a fun step because it really starts to like pull out some of those details. I like to just add these like curls down here and like I said around the ear. You know our hair has natural highlights so kind of have to keep that in mind too. Don't want her to have just like a bunch of flat flat hair here. All right so let's do this side. We're going to kind of play into the part still and make it just a little bit different. This one's going to curl down that way. You don't want to have both sides of the hair exactly the same. That's not really how our hair works, right? My hair does not lay the same on both sides as much as I would like it to. It does not do that. So we want to stay true to that. I think I want this part to come together a little bit more. So I'm going to pull this one so it comes a little bit closer to that one like that. I might need some more dark paint to do that. So I'm going to make sure I can cover that. And depending on your age, um, you know, you might be way ahead of me on the curls and ready for the next step. And you might be struggling a little bit with the curls and trying to figure out why this is so stressful. Um, keep reminding yourself, this is fun. And she's going to look like Maribel. And keep brushing back and forth. I think the misconception of painting especially, is that it's going to look right with the first brush stroke and somehow I can teach you how to do it in one brush stroke. And the truth is, it doesn't work that way. So it takes time and that's all right. But just little bits of white, making sure we don't give her any gray hair, right? Just Touch it with some light. Use your water if your brush strokes are breaking and you're not getting that nice smooth offload of your brush. You can go on the bottom of the earrings. Whatever you want to do to kind of add bits of light. All right, trying to kind of step back here and see what I've got. Sometimes it's good to kind of take a step back, but I think she looks pretty awesome. So I'm going to finish the eyebrow here that I couldn't quite do before, but see, as soon as I let it dry all the way, I was able to cover it up. Awesome. Guys, it's time to dig into those smaller paint strokes and really play into our cute Maribel. 
So let's get our flat brush and let's go ahead and fill in the black part of her eyes and do her eye details. That way those can dry for us so that we can do the glasses because that needs to be completely dry. So we're gonna fill in the black circles right here on her eyes, okay? So I'm gonna load my brush with black. I like to do this with a flat. I just feel like I'm in a lot more control of my brush. If you wanna go ahead and use um, your medium round brush, you can. Um, but I would try it with your flat brush because it's always surprising, I think, how much control people feel like they have when they use their flat brush to get that circle because no matter how long you have been painting, circles are so difficult. <laughs> and they grow because we constantly think we can make it better and better and better so we just keep going around and around and around. So know when to say that's as good as it's going to get. And let it be. Okay, we've got we've got her coming together. You can see it happening. Rinse my brush out again. I think I dropped my detail brush. Here it is. I do that almost every time it rolls off my little table. Okay, so We've got to fill in our lips. We've got a few butterflies. But again, I think I'm going to finish the eyes really quick. Give them their outline and eyelashes. Um, mm, I changed my mind. We're not going to do that. We're going to go to the lips. Because I think we'll save all of our lines for later. All right, so let's get our detail brush. And let's paint on some red lips and I did add the tiniest bit of white to some red for coverage only I want these bright red lips so I don't want to change it to pink at all okay she's got beautiful red lips and we're just going to paint them on ever so carefully and try and stay out of her teeth just like we would if we were putting lipstick on ourselves right we don't want it on our teeth We are going to outline these lips, so don't stress about perfect edges if you can help it. And we're going to do this bottom lip nice and deep. Oh man, it's always so fun for me when I can start seeing the character come through and it always happens when we do these details that's when you start to be like ah, it's not just a blob anymore okay she's got this nice deep smile beautiful smile again I am trying hard to stay out of the teeth, she might look a little creepy right now, but we'll get there. Okay, let's make a darker shade of pink for this cute butterfly right here. And I'm not even going to wash my brush because it just had red on it. So I want this pink to be different than my background. So darker than my background, but not red. So not the color of the lips. Kind of want different shades going on. All right, so once you have that color, go ahead and paint in this butterfly. And I'm doing it with my detail brush. Of course, you could do it with your medium brush and probably should have, but I had my detail brush already loaded, so I'm sticking with it. Getting those wings in. And then we'll do a cute little purple body on the butterfly. 
I just love the butterflies in this movie. So, so fun. Just keep filling them in as carefully as you can, avoiding getting any color in that nice white shirt that she's wearing so that we can just leave it white and not have to stress about painting that and just let it be our canvas. Okay, got a butterfly. Now since we need to make some purple, again, I'm not going to wash my brush. I'm just going to take some blue over here and make a purple right on top of that color of pink that I just used. And you can see it's just turning into a beautiful shade of purple. You can use as much blue as you want to, depending on, you know, if you're going plum or lavender. Mm. I like to add some white. Really helps the purple come out. That, as soon as you have the shade that you want, we're gonna go ahead and paint the body, which sounds difficult, but it's not. It's just a line right down the center of this butterfly. So just press on your brush and you just get that nice straight line, okay? And once you have that, then you can do the little curly antennas on top. Just curl out just like that. And this one I'll start the other direction. Cute little butterfly. You can practice these curls on a piece of paper before you go right to canvas. That might help you a little bit if you're like, oh, I'm nervous about the little curls. Practice on, on a piece of paper. Once you get the motion of it, it's pretty fun to do. Okay, I'm going to wash out my brush, grab my round number six, and I'm going to lighten some blue for my earrings. This plate is just, I mean, look at everything happening. <laughs> All right, I get some blue. And I'm going to fill in these fun earrings right up next to her cute face. Bright blue earrings. And I've got those curves to them. Fill them in. Super fun. All the way around. Lots of circles, lots of details in this painting. Even though we've simplified her quite a bit, she's still a very detailed character. So this might be, you know, like I said in the beginning, if you're like, I need a break, I'm, I'm tired or, or whatever it is, Take that time if you need it, okay? All right, let's make some lime green for our glasses. So we have yellow and blue here. And this is gonna be a lot more yellow than blue. So really start with a good amount of yellow and just a touch of blue. And you'll quickly have a lime green, add some white to it, really brighten it. And then just kind of leave that chunk, that pile, kind of pull it all together and set it aside like this. Because now we're going to put those in. I'm gonna wash our brush and I'm gonna give you two options. You can just get a detail brush and outline these glasses. The, the pencil line that you see. I'm actually gonna float them because I find I'm in so much more control of my brush if I do it that way. So what I wanna do is wash my brush really good, rinse it in some clean water. So I have a clean brush that I'm just gonna run my fingers down like this. I'm gonna squeeze some of the water out, not all of it. I want some water in there. 
And then I'm going to load by putting a corner of the brush, almost a third of my brush, into that green paint. And now I'm going to use that edge as the circle of the glasses. Again, this is a more controlled way for me to do it. Um, you need to decide what's best for you. If you want to just um, do your detail brush. This is the way that I like to do it. All right, so we're coming around. Okay. You can see it's just kind of fading in, which is nice and fun. Go around the other side, and we'll probably go around these twice to really make sure that that green is nice and dark and really seen. All the way around. Oh, it's tricky, but you can do it. While that side dries, I'm going to do the other side and then I'll do another layer on, on that side too. So all the way around. Again, I just feel like this is where I'm in control. If I was using a detail brush, I would struggle a lot more. So try this way. And then if you think, no, I, I can't do it with that big brush, just use your detail brush. No harm either way. All right, I'm going to load up again and go back to this one and really to find that nice lime green. It is pretty light, so two layers is a good idea if you're if you're doing it this way. Um, if you're doing it with your detail brush, one layer will probably be enough. But this way, with the water in your brush, it's kind of fading it a little bit, so that's why I want to do two layers. Okay, coming around, oh, she, this is, again, it's one of those things, you put these green rimmed glasses on her, and it's like, oh, that's Maribel, for sure. Okay, we are also going to do the piece that sits on her nose, so right, a little bit of a rainbow right there. Again, you can do it twice if you feel like you need to darken that spot a little bit. Perfect. I love it. Oh, glasses are done. All right. It is time for a lot of detail line work with our little brush and our black paint. So. To get started with that, I'm going to take a minute and spend some time thinning out my black paint with water. I do that by dipping my brush in water and then mixing the water into my black paint. I'm going to do that several times until my black paint is nice and thin in consistency, almost like inky in texture. Um, like I said earlier, kind of a melted ice cream. This will save you a lot of heartache when you go to do your lines. This simple step right here of diluting your paint is really the secret to good lines. So don't skip it. And make sure that you found that middle ground of not, not too wet, not water, but not too thick either. It's hard to see, but I've got a nice inky thin paint and this is going to be awesome. Okay, here we go. We're going to start from the top and just kind of move our way down. So we're starting with our eyeballs and what we want to do is we want to outline her eyeball and it's a little tricky and scary, but this is going to help them stand out and then we'll give her some eyelashes. So we're going to go around as careful as we can. Okay. 
and the longer you can go without picking up your brush, the better your brush stroke. So again, best you can, right? And then we're going to give her some lashes. And you can give her as many or as few as you want, but every girl needs some good lashes, right? Okay, let's go over here and do this eyeball. Round. As best we can without picking up our brush. It's tricky, friends. Just the best we can. Not looking for perfection. And then give her some lashes, kind of matching them up the other side. Oh, she's looking cute. Okay, so we're gonna continue to work our way down. We're gonna give her a little nose for her glasses to sit on. That's important. Give her some um, little shadow marks in her ears. Look at how she's coming together, guys. And then we're going to just define a little bit where her face and jawline rests, especially with the ears, you know, being right there. We want to push forward the face and the ears behind. Now we're going to do something crazy and outline our, our lips. I debated on this step when I created this piece, but it was just kind of necessary to pull her together for me. All right, come down. Lines are also about pressure, so if you push really hard, you're gonna get a thick line, and if you push lightly, it'll be much thinner. Let me give her little smile marks there. How cute is that? And then carefully we're going to outline her teeth as well. Again, just separating that. You can see how it's pulling it together though. And then we'll just do a kind of a little dash line to kind of give her those top and bottom teeth. Okay, let's give her a chin, just like that, and let's give her this neck coming down like that. And now is when we're going to dive into the dress, the top that she's wearing, okay? And we're going to really give it the personality it deserves. We're going to outline the whole neckline here. Now as you're doing this, even though you've diluted your paint generously, it can still dry up on you. Just depends on the weather where you're painting and you know if you've got a lot of lights on you or whatever. So it's okay if you need to keep adding water to it. I've got this fun top. Now this area right here is just going to be a nice thicker line so you can press harder right here to really fill that in. But you might have to go through it twice which is totally fine. And then we've got this one over here. Look how cute she is and how fast she's coming together. So we've got these cute little butterflies here that we're just going to outline in black. These little wings. Super fun. Put a body through that butterfly. And then if you're feeling really brave, you can do some little twisties on these butterflies too. OK, 
Kind of tricky work though, so you decide on that. Do the same thing over here. We're just we're outlining the wings. And again, you have so many colors on your plate and you could do colorful butterflies instead of just having the black ones that I've chosen to do. It's just totally up to you. So you decide on that. Oops, thicken that right there, it's bugging me. Do some little swirls here. Cute, 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 cute. Okay, I'm just checking my image here. We're really close, we're gonna add some highlights. And then we're going to sign our name. Hey, let's get our flat brush out again. And we're going to buzz through some fun highlights, brighten her up, sign our name. Again, clean water. Run my fingers through it, just how we did our glasses. And then we're going to dip the corner of our brush in white paint. And we're going to use that white paint to just add, look at that, fun little highlights and look at the earrings just pop when we do that They're, it's just it's so important it's so important they just personality right away all right so i'm going to keep highlighting throughout i'm going to give her forehead a highlight oh here comes the fire truck our studio is on a very busy street so Almost every time we record, we hear the fire truck. Just one of those things. All right, I'm going to come down her jaw and chin, put some light there. <laughs> If that doesn't like uh, normalize just our life, I don't know what does. Okay, so we did a little neck. Put a highlight on her chest here. Just swoop around there. Look at how bright this is. I'm going to do some in her little ears. And really, you can just kind of look around and decide where you want to put some light and just have fun with it. I'm going to do some in these little butterfly wings too because and you can do this with a detail brush you don't have to use your big flat just like the glasses if you're more comfortable with a detail brush you totally do that i really like the look of the faded paint when i use my flat and so that's what i prefer but to each his own, right? Okay, we've got that. I'm gonna add just a little bit of light up in these lips, just a touch, just a little teeny touch. Okay, let's flip our brush around. We're gonna use the bottom and I'm gonna dip it in white paint. So I'm using it kind of like a stamp, okay? Dip it in the white paint till you have a nice drip on the bottom like a chocolate chip. And then you're going to dot in those very important reflections of light in the eyes. This is a must not forget step because it wakes Maribel right up. Oh, I forgot a little highlight on her nose. I wanna do that. So little white on my brush and just kind of a dash of light right up there perfect you guys we painted maribel we did it this is a detailed piece hopefully you like how yours turned out if you're still painting feeling a little stressed walk away for a minute it always helps to just kind of walk away and come back to it but i'm sure it looks amazing and i would love to see it so send us your pictures or tag us on social media at my little paintbrush let's sign our name before we sign off here get your detail brush with some paint on it whatever color you want sign your sign your name leave your mark and i can't wait to paint with you again bye bye guys